Coming up on this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society. Good morning, naive angels. Good morning, Charlie. It's dangerous to go alone, so the Nintendo Cartridge Society goes with you. Welcome to Nintendo Cartridge Society. My name is Patrick Ellers, and I am joined, as I am always joined, by my co-host, Mark Mitchell. Mark, how's it going? Patrick, it's going great. I, I have a question for you. Yes. Are thank you-, you. Oh, my God. Thank you for having a question for me. <laughs> Do you know what beaver feet look like? The feet of beavers. The feet of a beaver. Uh-huh. Um... Jeez, so I think I do. Like okay. I, when 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 like I I picture a beaver, I start with its tail, uh-huh. right? Big, flat, yes, uh, like black with like a hatched sort of like pattern on it. Uh huh. Kind of leathery, and then I move up, big butt, big uh-huh. furry butt. Yep. Uh, and then like these back legs are like kind of haunched. In the front, don't they have like sort of uh, hands almost? Yeah, they have like little hands, but then they're so I was uh, looking at pictures of cute animals on the internet. Sure. And there were some really cute beavers just hanging out, being cute, and uh, with like the tail you described and their big old butts. Right. And then I was drawn to looking at their feet, which I had never really considered the feet of a beaver before. And they're like webbed. And kind of, I was of, gonna, say, yeah. They're are kind they of like, like platypusy. Yeah, kind I of. I hate that. Yeah. I hate that. That came platypus ask <laughs> is what I meant to say. <laughs> yes, they are. And but they're like for a moment, I was revolted, and for a moment I turned away from the beaver. But then, the more I but, thought about it, the more I think like it made me like the beaver that they're so. I think very cute, but then they have mm. these like hideous, disgusting, revolting feet. And the fact that the, the two of those are combined, I right. think is kind of fun. Um, I like that they're animals that have jobs, that they like build things. <laughs> I think that's cool. <laughs> that's right. They're really pulling themselves up by their gross <laughs> by their <laughs> web feet <laughs> straps. Man, I can't believe you let me say platypussy. That's I, the I didn't worst. let you. <laughs> I didn't. I, I didn't. That's let the worst you. thing that's ever happened on this show. I, I didn't let you. Let the record show. I did not let you. Speaking of things Mark won't let me do, uh, <laughs> the Sonic Forces borrowing program. Would you like to be a part of it? Uh, you can certainly try. All you gotta do is email us at Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail.com. gmail.com. And give us a mailing address so we can send you my copy of Sonic Forces for the Nintendo Switch. You play the game as long as you want. And that can, look, if that is just you making your own, like, make your own Sonic character and making it a cute little beaver and then turning it off, I think that's okay. Um, And then you send it back. I pay for postage both ways. Uh, I don't pay you for your time, though. So don't, I don't want to get, I don't want to get caught in that. That's right. The Sonic Forces borrowing program is not a job. It doesn't, don't put it on your resume. That's right. That's right. You 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 cannot put it on your resume. You, you, it is also not good for um, college credit. None of that. <laughs> that's right. That, although that's an interesting idea. We haven't really explored the Sonic Forces internship program, and maybe that's right. something that we could look into at a different time. But that's a different program. We're not accredited. We can't do that. <laughs> um, uh, there there may be a copy of uh, Untitled Goose Game in there. That's that's something that uh, that. Uh, happens and it, and it's okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm distracted. I'm getting texts right now that I'm trying to uh, trying to mute. Um, uh, but yes, get on the list. Become a part of the Sonic Forces borrowing program. Another thing you can do is you can leave us a five star review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or anywhere that you get your podcasts. We appreciate it so much. It helps people find the show. Patrick and I like reading them. Um, if you leave us a review on the US Apple Podcast Store, we will see it and we will give you a shout out. Thank you to everyone who has done so. If you leave us a review anywhere else, we can't see it, but we still want to acknowledge your review. So please hit us up on Twitter, send us an email, let us know uh, so we can acknowledge it on the show. 
And one of the easy ways that you can, uh, you know, be in touch with us to tell us that you're leaving a review uh, is you should join our Discord. Um, it's a bunch of fun people having great conversations about Nintendo. Uh, and today, uh, good good conversations about names and the origins of names and where they come from, why people are named what. Um, a very good time in the Discord, I'd say every day. So uh, email us or on Twitter, um, let us know that you want in and we will send you an invite. And then lastly, Mark, this is exciting. We are ranking all of the tracks in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, starting with the tracks that came with it, right? So we know that there are DLC tracks that have been added. More will come down the line. Um, but we are starting by just ranking the original 48 tracks in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. That is a huge task, so we need your help help tell us which tracks you love tell us which tracks you hate tell us which which tracks uh you know make you swoon we w- we want to know we want to this information so that we can incorporate it into the show and we need uh that information by august 19th or we can't or we can't use it mark that's 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 what we need yep i think we've never actually made this a rule but if we got emails about this after the 19th do we just delete them without reading is that how that works? Ooh, uh, yes, that's right. Uh, any email about this that we get, well, no. What what happens is first we send a return email that says uh, "too late, loser," and then we <laughs> uh, delete the email without le- reading. Right. So, this, no, doesn't sound, this doesn't that's sound. This doesn't sound like us. This doesn't sound like us. It's, no, it doesn't. Uh, but don't risk it. Maybe maybe we're changing who we are. So um, get your Again? emails in <laughs> before the nineteenth. So you will live without regrets. Uh, and, and thank you to everyone who has emailed us already. We do have a few emails. Um, and uh, it's it's going to be a good conversation. It'll be better if more of you email in. Um, all right, Mark, we have got, uh, we've got a, a fun activity, I think, for tonight. We're going to be inventing new naive angel modes. Let's get into it. And of course, this is based on the revelation, the announcement that Bayonetta 3, which uh, has a notoriously uh, sexualized uh, main character, um, is uh, coming to the Nintendo Switch with a uh, what they're calling a naive angel mode, which is a way to elect into a censorship of some of the sexuality in the game. Uh, now... Um, for me personally, I could see where this uh, mode is useful. It's 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 funny the the example they gave on Twitter when they announced it was uh, so you can play it in the living room, you know. Um, but like I've also if I'm in like a public place, I don't want anyone seeing that I'm playing like the horny witch game. You know, you know what I mean? <laughs> yes, I I do. I, I completely agree. Um, and you know it's uh, I, no, which is not to to judge anyone who wants to play the game with uh, the the mode off. I'm you know probably would mostly play it uh, off as well. Um, but uh, just the the idea that there is this mode that lets you sort of take an aspect of the game and not experience it. Um, that that's what that's what we're playing with that idea today. Um, I do think it's uh, funny and insignificant to uh, just make Bayonetta Bayonetta more clothed because uh-huh. I don't I don't really think that's I don't think that's all of it right yeah. no I completely <laughs> but, agree it, it would be funny if it was like the uh cable tv like what am I trying to say like you know how when they broadcast movies on cable tv they will you know edit they them take the swears out it, yeah. exactly yes it would be funny to me if in addition to um, providing Bayonetta with more clothing. It also made other edits to just make it overall more friendly, family friendly. Uh, and that could be very funny too, right? Like um, there, uh, I was watching um, Die Hard on TV. Which, I mean, obviously like 20 years ago, right? Because I was <laughs> watching a movie on TV. But Die Hard was on TV. Um, and, you know, Bruce Willis has a, a famous catchphrase in that movie that uh, has an MF in it, right? Uh-huh. Uh, and so... He he said, uh, "Yippee Kaye, Mister Frog!" <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Kermit! <laughs> Shout out to Kermit! Uh, played in this movie by Alan Rickman. Um, but so yeah, we we've come up with a, a you know three to five games that we think should have um, different naive angel modes that will remove something that Mark or I find objectionable in one form or another. 
Um, Mark, would you like to go first or would you like me to go first? Uh, why don't you do us the honors tonight? Okay, so my first selection here is a game that I love, um, but that I feel very conflicted about. It is the game Catherine um, from Atlas. Um, that is a uh, it's a very strange game where you spend half of the time uh, so it uh, like hanging out at the bar. Um, trying to hook up with a woman who is not your fiance, um, and then keeping it from your fiance. And then at night, you have stress dreams where you are like a goat man trying to escape a monster um, as you like climb up this uh, uh, this like tower that's like crumbling behind you. And there are like other goat men trying to escape the, the monster as well. Um, and uh, it is not that I object to the sexual content in this game. I think the sexual content in this game is great. Um, but uh, the Catherine is so strange because it is, uh, a, on one hand, a strong storytelling game where you're making like interactive choices and really like role playing out this like absolute garbage man uh, as he tries to cheat on his fiance. Um, and then on the other hand, it is a taxing really difficult puzzle game. So I want a naive angel mode that allows me to turn off either one of those two parts of the game. <laughs> so I can just do the infidelity simulator or just do <laughs> the puzzle game. I don't want to have to go back and forth because like you get some momentum in one and then uh -huh. you're struck with the other and you're like, no, no, I got to start over with momentum. So, uh, Catherine, a game I love, uh, a game that feels like secret shame to me. Uh, I'd like to only opt into playing half of it at a time. Okay, well, it's um, my my first pick is like weirdly similar to this, and it um it came out of my uh recent playthrough of Bowser's Fury. So it is what I am calling naive fury mode, and I <laughs> I want to be able to toggle fury Bowser on and off in the post game of Bowser's Fury because yeah. you know like I I uh when I was playing it in the beginning I was kind of like complaining about Fury Bowser still not my favorite mechanic but in the post game I really wish that I was able to either um tog toggle Fury Bowser off entirely so I could just like do the platforming that I wanted to do in uninterrupted or toggle him on so that way I can you know, because some of the uh, cat shines are only available. Like, you can only really get them during yes. Fury Bowser. So, I, I just wish that I could do, like, one or the other and, like, really focus my attention. So, that would be – that would some that's something that I would really like to see come to Bowser's Fury. Um, That's really funny. And it's, like, one of the I, – I like relegating it to the post game um, because there is – an element in the it's like after the first um, 50 shines that it becomes like post game, right? Like the second half of the game basically yeah. um, is, is, is post game. Um, but like, th even though it's annoying in, in the first 50 shines that like you're getting Bowser when like, you don't want to deal with Bowser. Um, and uh, like, you know, like towards the end there, he, it's happening so frequently, right? Where you're like, Bowser, leave me alone. <laughs> um, but there's, there's that element of, him sort of like looming over you that feels like, I don't know, like Nemesis in uh, Resident Evil 3 um, or just like this aspect of the game that you can't control. Um, so I like that it would still be there for the, the game proper, but in the post game, you know, it let, let you do what you want. Yeah, that yes, exactly. That's exactly how I feel. Um, also, we find the site of, Bow of uh, Fury Bowser offensive, so <laughs> <laughs> just pixel him out. Uh -huh. um, all right, so my second pick, um, this is a game that we, I don't know if we talked a lot about it in the lead up to its release, but uh, I remember checking out the, the demo for it um, and uh, knowing all along that it wasn't going to be my kind of game, uh, but always being a little bit intrigued by it. I'm referring, of course, to the Switch game, Damon X Machina. Um, so Damon X Machina is a like mech combat game. Um, and like all things related to mechs, it's in love with its own numbers, right? Um, I don't know if Mark, have you, have you ever played any like tabletop games with, uh, with mechs in them like Battletech? No. Or, um, Man, I played Battletech for a little while in like junior high school and high school, um, and it is so 
it is one of those tabletop games where it's like, okay, pull out seven charts and, you know, where you're like cross-referencing things to like, okay, well, I'm on, I'm on uh, elevation level three, you're on elevation level two, uh, and I'm going to attack with a, a kick attack. Your character is like this weight, so it's this tall. Oh, wow. And like we got to cross-reference all these things. Um, and that was the sort of between fight experience of playing Damon X Machina, at least in the in the demo version of like the customization to the mechs is just like and that's what those games are built on right is like you're able to decide what's important to you and you can fight however you want blah 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 blah. i want a naive angel mode that takes away my ability to choose that is just like here is the optimized way to use the mech here's the optimized way to go into the next battle and just i wanted to say here's what you need and here's how we're accomplishing that for you. And then I go into the battle with the fully kitted out mech. Yeah, man, that would make it so much better. I played the demo for Damon X Machina as well. And yeah, it was just, um, all of that's, it just felt overwhelming. And that was just in the demo, you know, just like totally yes, almost like yes. over my head. The other funny part of, uh, the demo for Damon X Machina is I, in the beginning, I was playing with the Japanese voices, but with subtitles. But then you would get into battles, and they would be talking, but you couldn't like <laughs> pay, pay any attention to what they were saying because right, you were trying right. to pay attention to what was going on on the screen. Yeah, I actually, I forgot that that's also a component of this. Let's put two naive angel modes in here. <laughs> um, one that just removes all of the chatter. <laughs> and like, if if there's information that I need from uh, that that like talking, just like drop a little waypoint on the map. <laughs> it's like I'm supposed to go over there now. Well, um, look, there's there's uh, l l there's an undeniably cool like kernel at the center of Damon X Machina, right? Like, I want to drive the the game is so stylized and like. It's so graphically slick, and you're riding around in giant mechs like that's cool stuff. Um, but man, I just I just don't want I just don't want to be bothered by the by the boring parts. Yeah, you know, there's a um, uh, ooh, I wish I could remember what it was called, but there's a Atlas RPG that's on the 3DS that was like a remake of a DS or PSP remake, and they basically <laughs> sounds like a 3DS game. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, oh man, I w I wish I could remember what it's called because I uh, bought it. And part of the appeal to me is that it has just like a straight up like story mode. With the story is supposed to be really good. The combat is like really complex, and it's just like yeah. I when I play this, I think I'm just going to play it for the story story mode, just so I can like experience this story that's supposed to be really good. And yeah, some, yeah. I wish more games had that, where it was just like, do you know what? Let me uh kind of like coast through Demon X Machina. Yeah, well, and then, like, there's such different parts of your brain to engage, right? Of the, like, okay, now I'm going to, like, manage this and, like, I'm going to, you know, try and figure out which is the, where I have more more of an advantage. And then, like, the other part, which is, like, run and gun and, like, fly around and, like, swing robot swords. Like, they're not – they're different parts of my brain, and sometimes I need one part to just rest. Frankly, the uh, the management and, um, like, the leveling up and all that feels like work. Mark, it feels like work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my next pick is uh, – comes from Metroid Other M, and it is what I am oh. calling Naive Samus Mode. And all I want is to be able to skip – or speed up the cutscenes in Metroid Other M. Um, um, I like that you're naming each of these. I did not do that. <laughs> <laughs> we, you, you and I played Metroid Other M um, yes. for this show uh, years ago at this like point. Like five years ago. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> and I, I had played it previously when it first came out for Wii. And I don't hate the core mechanics of like the core gameplay of Metroid Other M. I don't think it's great, but I don't think it's terrible. But it is an insane decision to me that you cannot skip the cutscenes in Metroid Other M, even on a second playthrough. Like, the game just does not let you. And I yes. really think a lot of this ga the game would be improved if you were able to skip it if you weren't interested in the story. Because the story is the part of the game that I gets, like, ragged on the most because it's pretty bad. And right. being able well, both, to both the story itself and the like execution of it, right? Yeah. Like the like the, the acting's not great. Um I wonder if other M could stand to just be remade. Ooh. That uh, a fan remake of Metroid Other M. 
that could be Ooh, cool. Oh man. Ooh, let's get let's get those uh those uh another uh, Metroid Two remake guys on a, a remake of Other M in pixel art style. <laughs> yes, um, I you know when I played through the demo of Klonoa Fantasy Reverie series, the w- one thing that I thought was really really cool is that they let you watch the like opening cutscenes at two times speed. So oh. so you can so you can still watch them and like, but you can just get through it way faster, and that is something that all games should offer yes all games uh, i mean there are so many things that all games should offer one is a a fast forward through uh through cutscenes. uh another is um replay any cutscenes that you've already experienced yeah because some sometimes you push like the button and you you don't know like is this gonna pause it is this gonna skip it is it gonna skip too much of it you know so like that i don't know what's going on um so both of those and honestly just a chapter skip like if i'm if i'm like you know, if I'm hitting a wall somewhere and I just want to get to the next part, like, just let me do it. I'm trying to experience the game. Well, if we're asking for things, all games should also come with a 30 second rewind. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Uh, and and like the, the rewind, like microsecond by microsecond. Right. Where yes. you can like actually rewind in real time. And uh-huh. not just like skip back 15 seconds or, or mm-hmm. 30 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Metroid Other M remake, though. Mark, I think we, we're on to something here. I I I really do think there it like it gets repetitive but I don't think that the core game itself is all that terrible it's just everything around it may, I think makes like the overall package yeah. like I I take out the pixel hunting sections like totally. get those out of there um but that's not what this that's not what this episode is about no that's, that's not, not what this episode is about naive samus mode where we uh would just well, the one improvement that this would make is just being able to skip cutscenes. Right. Okay. Mark, now we have to retroactively go back to my first two picks and name them. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, for Damon X Machina, I'm going to call it uh, Naive Robot Mode. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, and then for Catherine, I think I need two different names here um, because one is for. Uh, a, so a Naive Adulterer Mode for uh, turning off the uh um the the puzzle sections and naive goat boy mode for uh <laughs> turning off the infidelity simulator okay i like that a lot <laughs> okay um so now for my third pick i got to name these on the fly now mark <laughs> uh for my third pick i'm going to introduce naive monkey mode in Donkey Kong Country, and I am, of course, of course applying this to every Donkey Kong Country game where this might be an issue. I don't want to see King K. Rule. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like him. I think he's a bad character. I hate what he's a king. Oh, he's a pirate. Oh, he's a mad scientist. Enough. We don't need King K. Rule in these games anymore. I want to go back and play some of my favorite games on the Super NES. I want to discover Donkey Kong Country 3 and Donkey Kong Country 2, as you and I did over the course of uh, making this show. But I don't want to have to keep fighting uh, King K. Rule. I think the most upset I've ever seen you is when King K. Rule was announced announced for Smash Brothers. <laughs> it's a bad addition. Look, he should be pixelated out. Like I'm, I'm okay <laughs> knowing that is that he's there. I don't want to have to see him or explain him to anyone that I'm around. You know yeah, what I that, mean? Uh, totally. Yeah, you don't want to play a game with King K. Rule in public because you don't want to have to answer people's questions about him. No, people are gonna be like, "Why is he wear that crown? It's too small for his head." And I'd be like, "I agree." <laughs> They'll ask, what's up with his stomach? Is it made out of metal? And I'd say, I don't know. So uh, in uh, I, two questions. One, yeah. oh, well, I mean, first of all, a statement. Love it. Then two questions. First question, um, would this need to be applied to Super Smash Brothers as well? N- no, I don't think so. Because Super Smash Bro- he is present in Super Smash Brothers, and it infuriates me. But... I think he should be there because Smash is like a place where all of these video game curiosities like go to, you know, where it like the Mr. Game and Watch is in there. Rob the Robot is in there. We have all these things from like the history and like good or bad. It's all in there. And you get to beat him up. So that fulfills a lifelong and dream. And you get to beat him up. That's right. Yeah. Maybe uh, maybe you just make it so that no human player can select him. Maybe that's okay. <laughs> and then my second question is uh would he be pixelated in the games would he be wearing with different clothing or would he just be replaced by wart from super mario brothers 2 
I mean, I think you know the the best answer is replace him with Wart from Super Mario Brothers 2. And I think like the the, the sprite of him from Super Mario Brothers 2 as well, right? Like it's not it's a, we're not doing this as like the pre-rendered whatever. No, it's it's going to be an 8-bit um, you know, like three color uh, sprite from Super Mario Brothers 2. That's perfect, I think. Yeah, I love this. So it's like naive monkey mode parentheses wart. Uh, yeah, parentheses doki doki panic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is wart still the uh, the end boss in doki doki panic? I I believe that is true. Okay, all right. Because it, it seems weird that they would replace wart they would replace like whatever the boss mate the final bosses in doki doki panic with wart like that they would yeah. create wart and it wouldn't just be like bowser again bowser if they were yeah. going to go well, that route yeah it, and also like all the other enemies are basically new to super mario brothers 2 slash doki doki panic anyway so yeah i get it, it that that does stand to reason my next mode is what i'm calling naive wahoo mode and this is one that we've talked about on the show before, and it is that I want to be able to turn off the sound effects in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Yes. I mean, this. there, there are a couple. I, I have uh, coming up a, another hill that I'm dying on. Uh, but, Mark, this is definitely a hill that you and I are dying on. Uh, let's turn off voices and sound effects in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe because... I really just want to be able to hear the music. I just want to hear the music. The, the music mu- rips so hard. It's it's so good. And yes, would it put you at a disadvantage because you wouldn't necessarily be able to know when like a blue shell is coming? Absolutely. But also, maybe you see it like it hovers over your head before. Yeah, that's right. There like- are visual cues. Yeah, there's no downsides. Yeah. Naive Wahoo mode. You can't lose. Um, that's perfect. I the no notes and really no questions. Um. The, the the only uh thing I, I I would add on to it is like why isn't that already just an option in the game like so many other games have little sliders for like voice sound effect music uh and why is that why why where is that feature yeah I was really hoping that it would be part of the deluxe version when it came to switch yeah um or patched in as part of any of these DLCs or, or anything like that. Yeah, I would subscribe. I would continue to subscribe to N- Nintendo Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack just if, if they added that to Expansion Pack. If they created a new tier that was <coughs> yes. purely that you're paying like $100 a year, but you can turn off the sound effects in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, I would do that. So it's Nintendo Switch Online Plus Expansion Pass Plus wa- na- Naive Wahoo Mode? Uh-huh. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Uh, Mark, I'm going to steal your terminology for my next one, uh, the naive Wahoo mode. Um, And this is going to be applied to Super Mario Advance for Super Mario Brothers 3 on the Game Boy Advance, which is sort of the... I got to be the ideal way to play Super Mario Brothers 3 because it has the updated graphics, it has the extra le- levels from the little like scan thing um that uh came with the the or not came with it you had to buy separately for the the GBA um where you would scan barcodes and and get more um barcodes or were they magnetic like strips? I don't I don't remember actually. I I think they were uh the e-reader was like a magnetic strip. I think Yeah, yeah, mag- yeah, that's right. Um but all, all of all of that is great and awesome and like what a great way to play Super Mario Brothers 3. Here's the problem. All of these Super Mario Advance games on on the GBA went back to these classic Mario games and gave the the characters the voices from like Super Mario 64 basically, right? Like so Mario can't like run and jump without like wah wah wahoo. Um charming, I guess, but you're jumping all the time in a 2D Mario game. It's literally the only way you interact with the world is by jumping. Um, so they're talking all a dang time, uh, and there's, there's so there's too much. So I just want a, a mode where I can make them stop. That yeah, that would be very very nice because they are like especially um, with like you said the added levels for Super Mario Brothers three. It's such a cool version of the game, but yeah, it it is a really interesting choice that they added all of those. I, and I, I wonder like how much of it is. No, I don't know. I, I, I always think about uh handheld um, gaming systems as like 
quieter experiences that like you are more often than not playing them without sound right because like you're on the bus or whatever and you don't want to like pull out your headphones to like plug into it um or you're in the living room with other people and you don't want to bother them right um and so like it just it boggles my mind that they would make the game more noisy like can you imagine how like annoying it would be to it's it's annoying to be playing it but if you're like in the room with someone else and like it won't stop going like yeah wah yahoo that would be terrible i i wonder if it was meant as like a showcase of you know how advanced the game boy advance was over you know the game yeah. boy or the nes but i feel like especially in Su- in super mario brothers where so much of the experience at least the experience that i remember is just like the music accompanied by the sound effects that it feels especially yeah. intrusive to have these like new additions yeah i mean that, that that's totally true too that like the sound chip of the nes was pushed to its maximum right and they're like the sort of synthesis of the like jump sound effect and the turtle hopping sound effect with the music like all was beautifully uh like it's it's a symphony of 8-bit sounds and then you know first of all that the sound chip in the gba is different than the sound chip in the uh, nes a that b it's like now yelling at you over and over again uh there's just so much of that like harmony is lost yeah i think so my next pick is what i'm calling naive social cues mode and <laughs> for for this one i want to be able to toggle off specific animations in animal crossing to speed up the game like i yes like there are certain things that like I just don't want that I don't want to sit through. And it's happened with every Animal Crossing game. No matter how much I love it, no matter how much time I put into it, it just becomes tiresome to see the animation of, you know, my villager taking something out of his pocket or putting something into his pocket. Or, you know, uh, there are a lot of like cute things that I wouldn't want to go away, like villagers reacting to things you do or things they find on the island. But there's just like a bunch of little they're just like microseconds, but it just begins to add up and really irritate over time and i want the option do you know how like on uh your like on phones um your phone like will do a bunch of fancy animations and everything but in accessibility yeah. settings you can turn them off and so you can just have like very uh uh like different experience that saves battery it isn't as like flashy but it's just like more like right to the point and i want yes. that after a certain point of playing animal crossing to just be like okay i get it now i just want to be able to like do this stuff faster or, or even if there was just like a slider right where like you could lower the frequency with which it happens like look i think it's funny when i talk to blathers in the middle of the day and he like wakes up with like a bong and you know like that's funny he's an owl he should be you know he's he sleeps during the day that's very funny but like is it funny that the hundredth time that you do it? Right. Right. Um, and like, I think it's cute that like Isabel is working. Isabel and Tom Nook are both like working at their desks and I sit down at the stool and they have to like walk over there. Like, I think that's, you know, they get up from their, from their chair and like, come on over, but like, they could also just be there, you know, like it doesn't uh-huh. have to be a thing every single time. Yeah, no, that's it. Yeah, if you could, if it just like limited the frequency in which it happened, because I often I think of the uh, I'm I'm forgetting the character's name. Is it Gulliver, the like seagull that washes up on shore? Yeah, and yes, you know, like Gulliver. every the first time you talk to him, and it takes like six times talking to him before he gives you the mission. You're like, okay, that like that's cute, that's funny, but to do it multiple times, I'm just like, ah, I just want to, I just want this to happen faster. Yeah, well, and especially when, like, you're not even getting anything from him that you want anymore, where it's, like, you see Gulliver or Gullivar uh, washed up on the beach, and you're, like, sorry, man, you're just <laughs> staying there. I- I'm not going to wake you up. It's going to take Who up all my time. time. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Um, uh, and, and, like, this is also true of uh, flying anywhere. Um which, you know, we've complained about, like, the games online uh, b- before that, like, it is such a hassle to <laughs> to go to your friend's island and, like, it's a hassle for them, too, because while you're flying there, they just see this loading screen of, of, of a plane flying over. That's its own issue. Um, but, like, if, if you want to play Animal Crossing New Horizons uh, Happy Home Paradise, you have to boot up the regular game, go to the airport, say, I want to fly, I want to work and then fly to the happy home paradise. Why can't you just 
select that from from the home screen. Like I don't I don't need to be loaded into my own island if all I want to do is uh, decorate vacation homes. Patrick, we, if naive social cues mode existed, I think you could. I say we put that in there too. Yeah, I mean. It's maybe an incredibly lukewarm take to say that like Animal Crossing should add the option to just like smooth over some of the time wasting elements, but like, come on, why not? Yep. Um. So there, there. I I guess you can make the argument that um the slowness of Animal Crossing is part of it, right? Like they don't want you to be able to. I get why they don't let you craft multiple items at, at one time, mm-hmm. right? Because like that's not the kind of game that they want it to be. It's not Minecraft, right? It's not Dragon Quest Builders. Um, but like you get deep enough into the game, and like you you do want it to be that. Yeah, I mean, I think af- you're you're right. There is an aspect of Animal Crossing for sure that is supposed to be about just like being chill, relaxing. It's okay that it takes a little bit of time. You know, yeah. th- I, I do think that that's intentional. But yeah, after you put like a hundred hours into it and you're just trying to complete your Hollywood Bowl, you know, let's just get yeah. to the point here. It did take a long time to build the Hollywood Bowl on my island. That That is true. And it took Sarah and I together working. The other day we were looking at, did I tell you about this? That we were looking at uh, uh, Sarah and mine's total playtime on, uh, on Animal Crossing. Because, um, you know, on, on Tetris 99, we're in, like, the same profile, right? So um, it's it's a, an obscene number of hours, like 380 or something like that. Um, but it's both of us over years and years. Um, she's got, like, 450 hours in Animal Crossing on oh her own. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I think she went I th- – I think when Happy Home Paradise came out, she, like – completely double dipped on it was like as much as she put into the original game she put into happy home paradise she got really good at happy home paradise she got so good at it yeah like frighteningly good at it so you guys have more hours in animal crossing new horizons than you do tetris 99 yeah i think so wow wow yeah we have and we have a ton of hours in both of those and i have like 200 hours in uh hades which just goes to show like during the pandemic like we just played the Switch a lot. We just totally. played the Switch a lot. Um, all right, uh, Mark, for my final one, although I, I did I did come up with a another um, uh, a, another idea for one of these. Uh, maybe maybe you'll take it. Uh, but uh, this is a naive. I'm gonna I'm gonna describe it to you, and then you can help me name it. Okay, sounds good. Um, this is for Metroid Dread. Um, this is a, uh, a feature that will uh, let you turn off insta death when you are fighting the Emmys. Um, I loved Metroid Dread, thought it was a great game. I really enjoyed the Emmy encounters. I wish that there was a challenge mode where you could just do rooms of Emmys that they like custom make for you to just like challenge yourself. But as you are, there's no point in the game where you die as frequently as against these, uh, as uh, against the Emmys. And it's like, it's demoralizing to be killed by them over and over and over again. Um, and it's something that I pushed through because I was like, it's okay. This is just what happens here. But like, I had to have that conversation with myself of like, I'm just going to die a lot. And I know that there are a bunch of people for whom that I'm just going to die a lot was a gate that they could not get past. Um, so, turn off the insta death on the the emmys and in fact if you want that like automatic counter because there's a way where you just bat them away it doesn't even defeat them it just means that like you know you suffer the humiliation of being caught by it but you get to keep playing yeah oh my gosh that is such a good pick i uh the emmy like mechanic like that sort of mechanic in games is uh, my least favorite mechanic it's the fury bowser kind of <laughs> yeah i i do not like emmy like i don't i don't like nemesis really i don't like you know like mr x in resident evil 2 like i do not like these this mechanic in games and i like you i liked metroid dread enough that i um that i like played through it and i like pushed through the emmy encounters yeah and i didn't i wouldn't say i'd like I uh, hated the Emmy encounters, but I didn't look forward to them. I was always annoyed when I got to those sections. This would be s- such a good feature. And I think they should have, I genuinely think 
they should add it to the game. Like, I think it would totally. like make Metroid Dread so much more accessible, and I don't really think it would take anything away from the game. Yeah, yeah. Well, and like, I, uh, first of all, I, I absolutely agree that I don't think it t- would take anything away from the game to uh, make the the Emmys non fatal. Um, I mean, even if it's just like that, they only deal some damage to you, and then you counter them and, and, and get away. Like that would be something different too. And again, just as like an optional thing, because they're also like I I like the Emmy encounters. Uh, it, it it was a cool like fun challenge to me. I like when you get sort of like locked in the game of like cat and mouse, where like you go one way and you're like, oh no, it's it's found this like other little uh, way to snake around. I think it's such a cool idea, but like. The fact that it is like fail and like start again um, is just you know it's it, it doesn't it doesn't feel good when it happens um, and like if I want to be like it's okay I'm gonna like power through and figure it out that's okay um, but I just know that that's not the way everyone approached the game because um, that's also not how the rest of the game presents itself you know there's maybe some like bosses will kill you a, a couple times but even that like uh, you know barring the final boss. Um, the rest of them, you know, maybe take like two or three tries and then, and then you got them. Um, but an Emmy, an Emmy will kill you a dozen times. No problem. Yeah. I'm, I'm in general a really big proponent of um, people of like difficulty settings in games and people being able to, you know, like choose what they want their experience to be. And uh, I think Metroid Dread is such a good game. And I think it's really unfortunate that, yeah, that like the Emmy encounters are um, so frustrating and there's no like alternative way to... Yeah experience it hilarious that when they did add uh, a difficulty settings to uh, metroid dread they added a harder mode <laughs> <laughs> well didn't they added something that like uh they added some sort of like easier mode right you did they take less i don't damage remember that. or you get more health or, or something like that i can't remember exactly what it was but it wasn't enough I, I, to yeah it sounds like a real half measure really yeah yeah for sure Oh, that's kind of the DLC for, or the new features that they yeah, added true. to Metroid Dread. True. Okay, my last one. Oh, I think we just call it uh, Naive Emmy Mode. Okay, all right, Naive Emmy Mode. Um, My last one is one that I don't exactly know how it would work. So, um, Patrick, maybe we can puzzle it out together. But I'm calling it Naive Timekeeper Mode. And I oh. think it should make the changes you affect in The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask permanent. Um, wow! <laughs> so th- this is a, this is actually I love it. I love it. This nukes the premise of the game, but yes. I love it. The, so th- this is actually this is something <laughs> that um I uh in the course of us doing this show together, I have come to like um believe because our like our experiences with Majora's I like Majora's Mask a lot, and I in our conversations of Majora's Mask, you you oftentimes say that the game is stressful for you and kind of de- like depressing because you make, you know, like you affect change in the world. You bring, you know, families together. You like, you do all these positive things, but in the 72 hour time mechanic, all of the work that you do gets reset and reset and reset. So none of it right. has any like real like permanence to it, um, which is. And, and you're, you're encountering people and people's in crisis right like right. The, the 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 one that was the breaking point for me was the gorons you go up to the mountain uh and it's covered in snow and like they're uh hibernating they don't know what to do it's supposed to be a volcano they they like being in the warm and you go in and you uh you know talk to all of them and uh they're sad and you travel into the volcano and fight the boss and like it opens up and it's like green and verdant and it's a living goron town and then you got to go back in time and undo it. Yep. And that that was not something that I had ever even like really considered in my playthroughs of the game like it but in the course of us talking about it on this show, I I have like I totally understand where you're coming from. And so like I I've, <laughs> I've taken it on as like my cause as well. And so for that reason, I think we need to have this naive timekeeper mode. Wow, I mean this may even be just like a naive uh, naive happy mask salesman mode, right? Like <laughs> Majora's there's... mask with no happy mask salesman. 
<laughs> I don't know. Is is he the one responsible for the for the 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 time loop? No, I guess Link is the one making the time loop happen, right? Um, because he goes back in time with with the ocarina, naive ocarina mode, maybe. <laughs> well, and I feel like the the challenge with this is that you would, I guess, only be able to help one group. You know, like you'd only really be able to affect change for one, right? right, right. Um, uh, one path, and so I yeah. don't, re- I don't really know how to reconcile That's tough too, that. Then. Yeah, um, <laughs> it it is also funny because like that the like the sadness and the desperation of not being able to help everyone in, in a single go is part of the DNA of that game, right? Like that's part of what makes it special. Uh-huh. Um, and so like. This is truly a place that is like a, a naive angel mode, right? That like I'm too soft and too gentle to experience the pain and sadness that the game wants me to experience. Yes. Um, so th- this may be the the truest application of naive angel. <laughs> yes. In fact, in fact, you, I had it as naive timekeeper mode, but I think we should rename it to naive angel mode. Yeah, for sure. I, I think that's I think that's only right. <laughs> Um, Mark, the the one other uh, naive angel mode uh, esque thing that that came into my brain while while we were talking about this, um, it's going to be straightforward. It's a naive detective mode for Famicom Detective Club, uh, both the girl who stands behind and the forgotten heir, um, and it would just introduce uh, a just tell me uh, feature where you would uh, you would select it and it would just advance to the next thing. Um, because there are, look, they're they're super fun games. I think the writing in them is great. The art's amazing. The music's good. Um, uh, and like just the journey that the characters go on, the characters are, uh, bright and colorful and fun, uh, have strong personalities. Um, and, but like the, the gameplay itself very rarely makes you feel like an accomplished detective, right? You're just trying everything until it lets you advance. Um, and sometimes you have tried everything. And how are you supposed to know that you're supposed to try that one thing three times? Or uh, try one thing three times, attempt to leave, do leave, come back, and then attempt to leave again. Like, how? How? <laughs> you know? It is only with a walkthrough that I was able to do it. I think if there's just an option of just tell me what to do would be would be perfect. Yeah, be, having auto advance would be so good. Because as you were saying this, I was trying to think like, well, what if they just highlighted the action that they wanted you to take but i don't think that'd be enough because there are times that i'm thinking of specifically like one of your many visits to the cliff in the missing air where it's like even if you told me to inspect i would not know what to like look at you know like yes i I just need that um you it does just kind of need that like take me to the next step like advance me right right and like if that's something that you can you can always select, right? So, like, if you wanted to, you could just autoplay the game, which I think would still be cool. <laughs> um, but, like, you know, for, for the most part, I, I, I played I played uh, the Famicom Detective Club games um, with my phone open to a walkthrough that was, like, do this, then do this, then do this, then do this. And it, it was spoiler-free, so, like, it wasn't uh, telling me anything that was going to happen. Just, like, locations and, like, inspect this, do this. Um and I would always attempt every screen I went into, I would try to get through it myself. And then, you know, on the like, I don't know, maybe 50% of times that I couldn't do it on my own, just glance down my phone and see like, here's the secret to it. And then you just do that and keep going. If I didn't have to have my phone, I feel like the gameplay experience would have improved a bunch. Yeah, I think that would have made a, wouldn't really improve those games again like you said games i really loved and enjoyed but i definitely played with a guide otherwise it was it would have just been infuriating yeah because it's just weird menu management yeah. the whole time um uh, do, do you think that there would be a uh, like a temptation of uh like I, and I worry about that for like all of these that like if you have the option to skip part of it or like just advance when you're like nah, i don't i don't, I don't want to have to figure it out do you think it becomes a, a thing that you're like, I'm not going to do that. And then like at one point you're like, ah, I'm going to start doing it. And then you just do that all the way through. Like, is there, is there a point where I guess it's just like accessing a guide, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. And I feel like who, I, I kind of feel like I don't think it matters that 
if, yeah. if that's the experience you want to have with the game and you're enjoying yourself, I, th- I think that's fine. It makes me think of the, and I also think that you won't necessarily, like it makes me think of, um, was it super new Super Mario Brothers Wii or Super Mario Galaxy 2 where Nintendo introduced, like if you died a couple of times, you they would just give you the option like, hey, do you want to skip this level? Like, do you want me to sure. just take you to the exit? And when I saw that, I was like, no. You know, it made me yeah. it made me try even harder. So I guess it could have like the opposite effect, right? Like yeah. if, if, it, yeah. it, if the option just shows up in the menu of Famicom Detective Club where it's like, do you want me to just advance you? Then it might be a motivator to be like, no, 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 no. I am going to figure it out. Yeah. Well, and like in Super Mario 3D World when like, the golden tanuki suit appears and you're like no oh, come on <laughs> did i just die 30 times on this one level yeah but like that doesn't mean you need to tease me with the golden tanuki although i will say so i i have one bonus one as well and it's just uh um native naive padawan mode and it in all i'm asking for <laughs> Is let me be invincible in Super Star Wars in the Super Star Wars games, so I can yes. so I can oh just see god. them. I can just see them all the way through. Yeah, Mark, that's perfect. Oh my god, that's so. I want to be invincible. I want to have unlimited force powers. I can't believe that force meter goes down. <laughs> let me throw the lightsaber. <laughs> that's yeah, all I that's want. Perfect. Um, and especially because like those games are so experiential anyway. Like, um. You know, they, they all have, like, the little vehicle levels in them where it's, like, you want to see, um, like, oh, how do they work out this uh, speeder bike thing? And then you get there, and it's awful, but, like, <laughs> you wanted to see it anyway. Yeah. Um, and then just, like, all of the uh, fun pixel art of the uh, characters and bad guys and stuff, like... Yeah, the, that should all be experienced and not locked behind a game that's, like, <laughs> cruelly difficult. It's They're so hard. All of them are so hard. And I would love to, like, uh, yeah, I could watch a play, uh, you know, playthrough online. But I would love to be able to experience it myself. Um, and But if I could just toggle and become invincible. Um, I'm concerned that this episode makes it sound like we don't actually like playing games. <laughs> I promise that we do. I promise that we love playing video games. But every now and then you're engaging with a game where you're like, you know what? I don't want this to be hard. Mm-hmm. I want to I want to just uh like you said, I, this is the experience that I want to have with it. Um I would uh of course be curious if our listeners have any naive angel modes that they would be interested in in applying to games. If you have any, please email us at nintendo cartridge society at gmail.com. gmail.com. Or bring them up in uh, our our Discord tomorrow or all weekend long. It'll be fun to chat about them there. Um, All right, Mark, let's close this out. All right, that is going to do it for this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society. Remember, please rate, review, and follow us at Apple Podcasts or Spotify or any old place where you get, uh, I was going to say, where you get Spotify, where you get podcasts. Um, If you like this episode, please share it on Facebook or Twitter or any place where you can share stuff with other people on the internet. You can follow us on Twitter. I'm at Patrick underscore Ellers. Mark is at MKE Mitchell, and the show is at NinCart Society. We also have a Facebook page, which is just Nintendo Cartridge Society. Anthony DeLuca made our logo, and our theme music is pro- is provided by 8-Bit Betty. You can get more of his music by going to 8BitBetty.com or by listening right now. For my co-host, Mark Mitchell, this is Patrick Eller saying thank you for listening.